they have a magic button on the bottom you press and you'll be amazed at how cheap this camera is and what it can do. Hello and welcome back, uh, Matt from MrLiker.com. The camera I have for you today is less known and is less of like a, a court camera compared to some of the popular names I've been covering in recent videos. We've looked at the Hasselblad, we've looked at the Mamiya 6, we've looked at the Mamiya 7, uh, the Mamiya RZ67 is in the pipeline. Those are all kind of well-known, well-respected cameras in the medium format market. The camera I'm going to show you today only discovered after already owning all of these cameras. So I kind of wish I knew about it before because I could have saved myself a lot of money. You'll be amazed at how cheap this camera is and what it can do. So before the prices go up on eBay, let's get started. The cameras we are talking about today are called Voigtlander Perkyo cameras. They are 1950s folding cameras. They have a magic button on the bottom. You press and so this particular model is a Voigtlander Perkyo 1. I also have the Voigtlander Perkyo 2 and we'll discuss the differences. So beautiful little cameras and when folded they are crazy small. Normally we talk about price first but it may shock you at how affordable these cameras are. So what I'll do, I'll keep that till later in the video. Probably the most impressive fact about these small cameras is their size. First of all, what is a Voigtlander Perkyo camera? These are folding medium format film cameras released in the early 1950s, which shoot 120 film, giving you 12 or sometimes 13 photos per roll of film. In terms of weight, the models vary slightly, but they are roughly between 520 and 525 grams, which is less than a Leica. So for all of you fellow Leica fans, this is where it gets interesting. What we have here is my Leica M6 with a 50mm lens. And this is one of the more compact 50mm lenses, the Leica Summit 50mm f2.5. So this is the small, portable, compact form of a Leica M film camera. And if you compare it to like a Mamiya RZ67, you can understand why a Leica is enjoyed so much. Obviously, they're not quite comparable. So people may buy Leicas for their small form factor and not buy medium format because of their oversized form factor, whether it's a Hasselblad, whether it's the Mamiya RZ. So what would you say if I could tell you that you can get a medium format camera, which is smaller than your Leica camera and gives you six by six negatives? Interesting, right? So there is the Leica and there is the Voigtlander Perkyo 2. It can be the Voigtlander Perkyo 1, 2 or 3. They're all roughly the same size. So why is it interesting? It's interesting because the negative size is pretty much the size of the cover on the front of the camera this big. This is around four times larger than 35mm film. So even if you put the best lens on your Leica, if the negative coming off the camera is four times better, you can't really compete. The, the, the larger negative size captures so much more detail. So for a few more comical size comparisons, this is a 6x6 film back for my Mamiya RZ67. So this is just the back and the Perkyo is smaller than the film magazine, the whole camera. Pretty crazy, yeah? So again, Mamiya RZ, Voigtlander Perkyo. Depending on the lens that I attach to the Mamiya RZ, I can shoot exactly the same composition on both the cameras. And if I'm using my 6x6 film backs, the film negative will be the same from both cameras. If you stop the lens down, the resolution from both of these cameras is pretty much identical for my eyes. So why would you carry this when you could carry this? And I've not even mentioned the price yet. That's where it gets really crazy. One more quick size comparison for Hasselblad shooters. So if you're using your Hasselblad with a standard 80 mm kit lens, this will give you the same composition and same film negatives size-wise as the Voigtlander Perkyo. And again, look at the size difference. It's just crazy. So first, I really wanted to point out how amazing the small size is of the Voigtlander Perkyo camera. In terms of different Voigtlander Perkyo cameras, so the Voigtlander Perkyo 1, which is this camera, comes with either the Vascar 75mm f3.5, the Vascar 80mm, or the Color Scopar 80mm f3.5. The Color Scopar lens variant version is supposed to give a higher optical performance than the Vascar lens. The Voigtlander Perkyo 2 camera comes with the 80mm f3.5 color scope bar lens, as I say, which is the more desirable lens. Does it matter in reality? If you stop the Vascar lens down from my experience, I've not really noticed any difference. If you shoot maybe f8, f11, I really don't see any difference between the Vascar lens and the color scope bar lens. The advantage of the Pokio 1 is they are more available and slightly cheaper. 
So when we come to price, I'll price based on the, the cheapest version. Because as I say, if you stop the lens down, you won't see a difference. So what other differences are there between the Voigtlander Pokio 1 and the Voigtlander Pokio 2? The advantage of the Voigtlander Pokio 2, it has an automatic frame counter and it has a double exposure prevention meaning you can't overlap your photos. That means the frame spacing throughout your roll of film is uniform. You don't see different size spaces. The Voigtland Poké 1 is a bit more primitive where you have to use the red window on the back of the camera, turn the film, advance on the top and look for the number to appear in the window. When the number appears in the window, for example here, number three, that means you're ready to fire off exposure number three. It's more of a basic design found on some of the older medium format folding cameras. I have more medium format folding cameras, so maybe I'll share some more in later videos. But I think the Voigtlander Perkyo is a real gem because the image quality is very similar from my eyes to what you can get from a Hasbad or a Mamiya 6. In terms of filters, I use the Voigtlander Perkyo with a push-on yellow filter. I'm not sure where I've put it, but it's basically a push-on design. And the best thing is for me, you can leave it on and close the camera, which is really good. One thing I found with some folding cameras, perhaps the Fuji GF670, which I still need to review when I find it. You cannot leave your filters on the lens and then close the camera. There's not enough room for the lens to go back into the camera body with a filter attack. So I think it's a really nice design for the Voigtlanders that the, you can have one filter, push on filter, and it will still collapse into the camera, meaning you don't have to keep taking it on and off between every photo. With these being old cameras, pretty much everything is on the front of the lens, whether it's your focusing for your distance, your aperture, your shutter control, and even like a port for the flash. To fold a void on the Poco, you have to press the two buttons here. And there you go, and it folds up nicely like so. One other feature on the Voigtlander Pico cameras is they have a cold chill on the top of the camera. I'll come on to that in a second. So if you ask me to tell you three advantages about owning a Voigtlander Pico camera, I would say small, cheap, sharp, not in any particular order. It is smaller than a Leica 35mm camera and arguably giving you similar image quality to a Hasblad or a, any other medium format 6x6 camera with the lens stopped down and they're extremely underpriced. I cannot understand why they are so cheap. With the recent price rises of pretty much any decent film camera, I think the only reason the Voigtlander Pocos are still affordable is people don't know about them. It seemed to be pretty well regarded regardless of which camera format you use that a Voigtlander color scope or lens is a optically excellent lens design. So those are the three pros. So what about cons? This is probably the main reason why the price is lower, but it shouldn't be if you know how to use the camera. The biggest drawback for the Voigtlander Pico camera is it has no built-in coupled rangefinder. This window is viewfinder only, giving you obviously your 6x6 view for your 75 slash 80 mm lens. So the only way you can focus your image is by hyperfocal distance and basically guesstimating your distance to your subject, which is probably why most people don't buy the camera. But what you can do is you can buy a additional rangefinder to clip into the cold shoe. That is exactly what I've done. So this is another item I've only recently discovered and I wish I knew about it years ago because I can use this on any camera which doesn't have a built-in coupled rangefinder such as my Hasbad SWC is a great example, or the Mamiya 7 where one of the lenses is not range finder coupled. This now lets me focus accurately with any of those cameras. So how does it work? So you just, so I just clip it into the Voigtlander that I'm using. You look through now the range finder on the top of the camera and like with any other range finder, you turn the wheel until your images align. And then if you can see, you read off the distance in meters from this wheel here. You then dial that distance in onto the lens and hey presto, your image is in focus. It really is that easy. So a really wonderful piece of kit. So what type of photography are the Voigtlander Picos most suited? Being a fixed lens camera design, it would suit people that tend to buy one camera and just leave one lens on the camera. So as I say, a great example again is the Hasselblad, the 80mm lens. If you're happy with that view for all your photos, this camera is definitely worth considering. Being a fixed lens camera, obviously you cannot shoot telephoto and you cannot shoot wide angle. This will only give you a normal view. Now, if you follow my work, you know personally I enjoy shooting mostly portraits, but I didn't buy the Voigtlander Poco to shoot portraits. You could use the camera for portraits in theory like you can any camera. You will have to keep the model or the subject waiting because it is a slower process to 
to fine focus compared to many of the other medium format cameras. With that said, I bought the Perkyo cameras not for portraits, but for travel predominantly. I wanted a small as possible, super sharp 6x6 setup which I could run with. Hasp lads are too big to run with, even though I have tried. I think there's a clip of it in my running with cameras video. It's too much to carry in reality if you want to do any kind of distance. And even the Mami S6 is a lot more bulky than the Voigtlander Perco camera. So I wanted a super small setup. And so to find this amazing camera was actually smaller than a Leica. I was like dream camera for travel. So for me, the Voigtlander Perco is best suited for high resolution images of a 50 mil equivalent in 35 mil terms. 6x6 six six view of slow moving or static subjects, whether it's buildings or landscapes or general travel memory type photos or even street photos. You could pre-focus on an area in the street and then take street pictures. I think those genres are definitely more suited to the camera than say portraits or say weddings or obviously sports photography, it, it's less optimised. Okay, photos. So it's normally this point in the video where I dig into my archives and share an array of hopefully quite pretty model portraits to show what the camera can do. Sadly, you may be disappointed. I bought the cameras before the virus outbreak, so I've not yet really had a chance to kind of accumulate a large body of work with these cameras. So these may not be the most interesting subjects I've ever photoed, but if you look at them in terms of image quality, you'll probably agree that the little Voigtlander Perkyo can really punch above its weight in terms of output compared to the more expensive cameras. And finally, what you've perhaps been waiting for, price. How much does the Voigtlander Perkyo camera cost? Are you ready? So the price of a Voigtlander Perkyo one, six by six medium format film camera, that is smaller than a Leica and can give you a similar looking image to a Hasselblad or Mamiya, costs a whopping 45 pounds. It's just like, poof, I can't really believe how cheap they are. If you enjoy shooting with Leicas like myself, you would spend more on perhaps a lens filter that is more expensive than the entire Voigtlander Perkyo camera. Depending on when you watch this video, the price may have already gone up. So what I'll do, I'll put a link in the description below directly to eBay and you can check the price whether you're viewing this video soon after release or three months time, six months time, two years time. Hopefully the sooner you see it, the price should be still close to what I've just quoted, which is £45. I saw four cameras listed at exactly the same price, so that seems to be kind of our, the market rate, so to speak. Just to mention, these cameras are Voigtlander Perkyo ones, so you will pay more if you want a Voigtlander Perkyo two. The Voigtlander Perkyo one, to recap, will give you the same image quality as the Voigtlander Perkyo two if you stop the lens down. So to me, they offer like the best value. I did mention at the start of the video, there's actually three Voigtlander Perkyo models. The Voigtlander Perkyo 1 and 2, which are the models I've shown you. And then there's also the Voigtlander Perkyo 3 or 3E or E. And that was the later model. Now the Voigtlander Perkyo 3 has a built-in coupled rangefinder, so it is much more desirable and as such the price is a lot more, roughly 200 to 300 pounds. And it's pretty much the same camera as the 45 pound camera, except it has a built-in rangefinder. So it's a much cheaper option to buy a 45 pound Voigtlander Perkyo 1, such as this exact camera I have here, and a separate rangefinder unit to go on the top if you want precision focusing. Think how much film you could buy with the money you've saved. So let's just give this price some context. Let's look at two very popular 6x6 film cameras. Number one, the Mami S6. So the used price of a Mami S6 is between one and a half thousand to two thousand pounds. So that's Mami S6. You then have Hasselblad. Hasselblad seems to cost at the moment around 850 pounds. That also shoots 6x6 film. Voigtlander Perkyo, 45 pounds. That also shoots 6x6 film. All those three cameras we just talked about can produce near identical images if you stop the lens down. And that's what's so crazy. If I knew about the Voigtlander Perkyo in my very early days of photography, I could have actually afforded medium format. It's probably worth mentioning. I can always hear you guys shouting at the screen, there are cheaper medium format cameras. And so yes, other great cheap alternatives to enter the world of six by six medium format photography would be something like a TLR camera, such as in my Roller Cord 3, or something like a Kiev 88, which is basically a clone of the Hasselblad. The Kiev 88 is more expensive than some of the cheaper TLR cameras. So I think 
TLR cameras offer excellent value for money. The main benefit for me of the Voigtlander Peco is not only the cost, but the fact that one, you can get it with a color scope or lens, and number two, the size. I bought this camera for the size. This camera could have cost £250, and I still probably would have thought it to be great value. It ticks my boxes, that being smaller than a Leica, offering 6x6 with excellent image quality. So in my eyes, a very undervalued camera. And just quickly, if you want to see inside, to open the camera, you press here top and bottom and inside is pretty similar to any other kind of folding medium format film camera. So that is the Voigtlander Peco 6x6. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're excited by the concept of a affordable 6x6 film camera which will fit into your jacket pocket, grab on while you can. As always please hit the like button if you got some value from this video and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have you heard of this camera before? Do you own a Voigtlander Peco camera? Thank you for watching and Theatre 5 Mail is back on the channel very soon.